This is the Meddling Kids Podcast, your groovy review of Scooby-Doo. I'm Julie Kin, and today I'm doing Scooby's Chinese Fortune Cookie Caper. And yes, before you write in, I know fortune cookies are not actually Chinese, but cookie in this case is spelled K-O-O-K-Y. Cookie? So I guess that's okay. Uh, logic. Anyway, it's a moonlit night in China, and we see a beautiful terraced traditional building. We also see a transparent, horned, blue, furry, cryptid being roaring and heading inside. He looks like a cross between a bull and Sully from Monsters, Inc. He's about seven feet tall, walking upright, and has an excess of fangs and horns. Meanwhile, the kids have shelled out to ship the mystery machine from the United States all the way to China. They're driving along a winding path while Velma and Daphne study a guidebook, and Shaggy studies a menu. Everyone is cavelling about how awesome China is. Velma indicates Fred missed a turn, even though they've been following the Rampu River. Now this is the surest sign that this cartoon is over 30 years old. A modern cartoon, even a kid's show, would certainly make jokes about poo, poop, feces, anything like that along these lines. Even the way they drew the map made it look like a medical diagram of the prostate gland. Picks online. Aside from the anal grandeur, Daphne tells us that the city of Rampu was also famous for the centuries-old story of the moon monster. Scooby is distressed to hear about this monster that came to Earth on a moonbeam. It cast a shadow on the inhabitants of Rampu, and anyone who was hit by the shadow was turned to stone. Now, Fred manages to get a flat tire right in front of the palace of Rampu, the place they were just reading about. Anyone else get the sense that Fred just needed an adrenaline fix to keep him perky on the vacation? He helpfully suggests, maybe we can stay at the palace tonight and fix the flat in the morning. Kind of pushy, if you ask me. Scooby and Shaggy decide to try to fix the tire themselves so they don't have to spend the night at the sight of a moon monster haunting. They start jacking up the mystery machine when the clouds part and the moon shines down. Suddenly, the moon monster appears and helps them jack up the van. But when they realize there's a moon monster behind them, Shaggy and Scooby freak out. The moon monster roars at them, as though to say, you're welcome for the help, and they faint from fear. When they wake up, the other kids are there, along with an elderly man we learn is named Len Fu. He scares them at first, but he's cool. They also meet a young, groovy dude named Kim Chow Ling, who just came from the United States and is the new owner of the palace. Scooby, Shaggy, and Mr. Kim all bow to each other very nicely. Then the show goes overboard and has them all keep bowing to each other over and over awkwardly. For a second, I was impressed at the cultural sensitivity, but I take it back. I know, I know, this was made a long time ago, but I'm still allowed to make fun of it. Mr. Kim is shocked to hear that they saw the moon monster. He implies that the full moon can play tricks on your eyes. Velma's so dismissive and says, that's just a legend. What a scully. Scooby and Shaggy try to run away, but a man stops them and says darkly, our guests should not travel so late at night. It's Chin Wong Sing, Mr. Kim's uncle. Now, I'm saying Mr. Kim because the way they introduced him was as though his first name was Kim, but the way Chinese names work, his last name would be Kim. I'm just going to call him Kim for the rest of the episode because that's what the characters call him. Mr. Chin bows and indicates he's honored by their presence. He also shares the awesome news that tomorrow, on Kim's 25th birthday, he'll fulfill a family legacy and inherit a treasure of priceless jewels and gold. Rockin'! Nothing can go wrong! But uh uh-oh, the old dude, Len Fu, comes in and says there's also a curse on the treasure and that Kim should dispose of it at risk of danger from the moon monster. To me, that seems quite wasteful. Inside the palace, Shaggy complains he's too nervous to sleep. Scooby is also on alert, sitting on top of a wardrobe to watch the door. Shaggy thinks this is awesome. That moon creep will never get past you. Moon creep? I mean, that's an okay insult, but I think they could have come up with something better. Maybe Looney Mooney or Sir Fangs a lot. Meanwhile, the moon monster appears behind Shaggy and startles him and Scooby. I'd like to point out that this dude hasn't done anything menacing yet except to invade personal space. Scoob and Shaggy run for it anyway. Chase scene! They hide in some paper lanterns and escape. They regroup with the other kids and their new friend Kim. Shaggy tells them all about their encounter and Fred wants to check it out. 
As they are racing off, Velma looks out a window and sees the creature on a boat in the distance. Now, he looks really top-heavy, and he's standing in the boat. So I guess he really is magical or has excellent balance and core strength. Fred, Daphne, and Velma all race outside to watch him row off. Inside the palace, Kim, Shaggy, and Scooby consider the treasure. Kim tries to decide whether to throw it all into the bay, as the legend suggests. While the humans debate the merits of this conundrum, Scooby plays with the crown and other treasures, and it's adorable. Meanwhile, a gong rings. Could it be dinner? But it's 0200, or 2 a.m. The kids all reconvene to investigate and find Uncle Chin turned to stone in front of the moon monster. The kids are horrified, even though they saw similar antics in season one. With a flash, the moon monster disappears. Velma finds some greasy streaks on the floor behind the stone corpse of Uncle Chin. They seem to end at the wall. The kids and Kim all search Uncle Chin's room. Of note, they find a display case of ancient tools, some of which are worth a fortune. Shaggy can't wait to get home and search his own toolbox. This repartee is interrupted by the entrance of Len Fu, the old dude, who again is a killjoy and asks Kim to dispose of the treasure as he is the only one who can save everyone. Guilt trip much? What will he do? We'll find out after this commercial break. We're the hosts of a new podcast called Just the Tips, a memoir. I'm Joe. I'm Chuck. We just two young men out here slanging these memoirs. Like crack. (laughs) (laughs) We out here teaching you how to be a man, and we just dropping a variety of knowledge to you one topic at a time. Check out our website at memoirs.men. Damn, that shit's fire. And on that site, you can catch our YouTube. Damn. (laughs) (laughs) Twitter. Oh, God. Facebook, Fire, Instagram, We There, Snapchat, Oh God, Tinder, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so if you like what you heard, you can follow us on Google Play and on iTunes. I'm Chuck, he's Joe, and this is Just the Tips of Memoir. We're back! Fred, Daphne, and Velma are going on a lovely 0300, you know, 3 a.m., boat ride to see if they can figure out where the moon monster went and how he got back into the palace so quickly. Fred delegates Shaggy and Scooby to search the palace grounds. They are not fans of this plan. Fred and the girls get caught in a current and are sucked into a cave tunnel. It's really quite Freudian. There's lots of stuff in the cave that had been pulled in by the current. Daphne finds a tunnel, and I think this perhaps is a metaphor for her coming of age as a woman. And Fred and Velma join her in an exploration of the tunnel. Okay, I'm going to end this metaphor now as I want to keep this podcast family friendly. Meanwhile, Scooby and Shaggy are having fun looking at their reflections in the water until they see the moon monster sneak up behind them. The moon monster just stands there growling and glowing, while Shaggy reminds us that if the moon monster's shadow falls on them, they'll turn to stone. They run around a corner, and when the moon monster rejoins them, they have changed their clothes into traditional 19th century Chinese fashion, and they convince the moon monster that they are rickshaw taxi drivers. The moon monster jumps in, happy to take a load off his big hairy blue paws. Scooby locks him in under a canopy, and the moon monster fights them off. He ends up riding down a set of stairs and banging into a large gong. Scooby and Shaggy run inside and see a door pushing open into the palace. They push against it, thinking it's the moon monster, only to have it rotate with them. On the other side of the rotating door is Velma, Fred, and Daphne. I think I said Velma. I meant to say Velma, but I guess V's and F's sound the same in audio. I don't know. Anyway, sorry about that. Velma, Fred, and Daphne. Who had followed the tunnel back into the palace. Now Scooby and Shaggy are in the tunnel. They slide back in on the rotating door and accidentally overturn some flower on themselves. Kim walks by and thinks Shaggy and Scooby are the moon monster because the flower made them glow. Turns out it wasn't flower at all, but some fluorescent powder. Now this sounds like something listeners Chris Osborne and Katie Clark would try as a food challenge. You've got to see some of their posts in the Meddling Kids podcast and Scooby-Doo discussion group on Facebook. Their creativity is astounding, delicious, and horrifying. Meanwhile, Len Fu is still trying to get Kim to throw out all his treasures. But plot twist! The Scooby gang convinces Kim to go ahead and toss it all into the bay. What are they up to? 
Scooby heaves the giant sack in the water, but unfortunately he was tied to the rope and also ends up in the water. Shaggy yanks him out, and then there's some antics involving a doggy full of water. He doesn't pee on anyone, it just comes out of his ears and stuff onto Velma and Shaggy. Then Fred has Kim follow him. Velma promises something very interesting in the tunnel. Perhaps his own coming-of-age ceremony? The camera shows us the sack floating into the cave pulled by the current. We then see the moon monster open the sack inside the cave and laugh while fondling his treasures. But the jig is up. The kids and Kim are all there and tell the moon monster to hand over the treasure. The moon monster starts walking toward them all menacingly, and Scooby and Shaggy take off running. The moon monster chases them, and Fred says to the rest of the kids, Chase him! So they're all on the way. Scooby and Shaggy run up the tunnel to the palace and head for a bridge. As the moon monster follows them onto the bridge, Shaggy and Scooby make the bridge bounce around until the moon monster falls into the water and the treasure falls into Kim's arms. Fred drags out the moon monster and unmasks him as Uncle Chin. He had used the legend of the moon monster to frighten Kim out of his legacy. His statue was a fake and not a dead body at all. He had carved that himself with the ancient carving tool in his room. It was the only tool looking worn inside the case. Lin Fu apologizes for being so easily fooled. Yeah, dude, next time check with Snopes first. Kim offers everyone a snack in celebration. Scooby and Shaggy make huge sandwiches with every typical Cantonese dish between each piece of bread. It's so gigantic they have to use a piece of string to tamp it down. As a kid, I remember this meal looking the most delicious to me of everything they ever made. Maybe I'll test the limits of my panini press with a recreation one of these days. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much to Dave Seste for the use of our theme music, Night Surfing. Thanks to Tiff, who moderates our Facebook discussion group, the Meddling Kids Podcast and Scooby-Doo Discussion Group. Please join us. Thanks for posting about our show on Facebook and Twitter. We're at Meddling Kids Pod. And thanks for sharing us with friends. Also, thanks to my family, who let me do weird experiments with our panini press. And remember, next time you're exploring a new cave, you would have gotten away with it if it weren't for us meddling kids. <laughs>